We went to the most crowded place we could find to ask people one question. For whom should we vote? Biden or Trump? As you can imagine, things got rather intense. Come on, what has Trump done or not done? He that represents racism, white supremacy. Do you know anything about post-colonialism? Hey, we're not enemies, my friend. You definitely are my enemy. Definitely your enemy, wow. Speaking of intense, that's Eddie's joke, here's some unclassified footage from a recent undercover operation. After outrunning the vicious canine unit dogs, tiptoeing around the booby traps planted around the perimeter, dodging the bullets coming from the Secret Service agents up on the roof, and scaling the high and well-fortified wall, I finally made it on the grounds of the White House. Not really. We're actually at the Nixon Library here near Belinda with this nice little White House replica. But friends, you get the point. 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue is a very important address. And right now in America, we're about to elect our president. This is a big deal. A lot of Christians think, ah, I don't want to get caught up in the whole political thing. Are you kidding me? We as Christians have been afforded the right to vote, to make our voices heard, to have an impact for righteousness, and most importantly, for the gospel. Look throughout the book of Acts. Paul the Apostle often referenced his Roman citizenship in times when it was beneficial for the good. And friends, we need to do the same. It's time to vote. It's time to stand up because there are a lot of issues at stake. We're talking about the sanctity of human life. We're talking about protecting traditional families, and we're talking about defending our religious liberties. So Christian, you have to get involved. You have to make your voice heard. You have to get out there and vote. So on this video, we hit the streets as you're gonna see, and a lot of people had a lot to say about Joe Biden and about Donald Trump. I think you're in for a treat. Ah! It's that time again, friends. Yes, the presidential election season is upon us and people are going out of their minds. We borrow every dollar that we give to the illegals, that we give to other countries that, by the way, come back as bribes to the DNC. And you got some problems with Trump. He feels that he's above the law. There's a lot of corruption. Uh, especially when it comes to money being involved. Trump, if he really wants to make America great, he's just got to stop the police brutality and just keep it mutual. You feel me? Everything else, I'm cool with. Like, he has my vote. We're a bunch of hypocrites. One moment we're in church, a lavare, a lavare, a lavare, and then we're voting for the left. They're aborting babies left and right. So how bad would it be if Biden did become the president? What would happen? Well, we'd go to war. This is a time when you see fights breaking out. Well, hey, we're just having a conversation. Say something. Something. Say some Get away, get away from me. Get up, don't push me. Guys, simple. Shut your Come on, Really? This is a time when you see friends, no longer friends. And we decided maybe it's a good idea to give people the opportunity to rant and speak their minds. Who in their right mind would do something like that? Nobody. That's why we did that. Welcome to the presidential rant booth. President Trump, uh, what I want to speak about is, you can see how strong he is for our country right now. Donald Trump, you have got to go. I think Donald Trump, I think Donald Trump, he gonna make America great again. Joe Biden, I feel like he's very sincere with the people. Muy buenos dias, señor presidente Trump. You're my voice and that's why I love your style. Dear President Trump, the one thing I know for sure is that you are consistent. You're consistently stupid. President Trump, love your life. Love that you back the red, white, and blue, but unfortunately, you're not doing near enough. I believe Joe Biden will pick good people, which Trump did not do. He's picking the worst. Anyhow, I'm gonna go with uh, Trump on mine. What about you, girl? I've always voted for Trump because he's doing things the way I think should be done. So, Connie, you feel better? 
And to you, the left, you ask money, but minorities never see a dime. And you're doing all the garbage you're doing in front of people, and they believe you. You know why? Because you have washed their brains. I feel so much better. There's nothing, nothing good about the left when it comes to Latinos. And here we are. They think that Trump is against them. No, Trump came to make it better for us Latinos. Unemployment went down when Trump came in office. What do you like about Biden? Um, I like the fact that he's consistent. He has been, he has a proven track record. Now, the administration of Donald Trump for the last three years, I realize his tweets, I realize, as Mike Pence said, we didn't elect a Sunday school teacher. We elected a businessman. I want, I want some hope for the Americans, and the Americans need it. You know, there's a lot of chaos going on in the world, and it's, it's just getting worse and worse, and Donald Trump is just not doing anything about it. You're obviously conservative. What, what well, made I you take the, start off that way. Why not? I've been a Democrat my entire life. What made you switch? Obama's second uh, election. Se second election. I cried for Obama when he got elected. I was so happy. To be honest, I just really don't like either candidate. I have no hope, to be honest. You know, all the focus in this presidential election seems to be on Donald Trump and Joe Biden. I say we need an entirely different new candidate. I say Ray Comfort for president. <laughs> say in one sentence, what's wrong with America? Why are we in such strife? Misinformation. You, know, you believe in God's existence? Oh, yeah, yeah, Dios mío. If it wasn't for my Lord, I wouldn't be alive. And what do you think of the Bible verse, righteousness exalts a nation, sin is a reproach to any people? Righteousness exalts a nation, sin yes, is a reproach. Yes, yes, yes. To, and we need to repent, trust in Jesus, Amen. and ask God to heal Amen. this land. Bruce, are you an educated person? I am very educated. Are you well read? I'm well read. What's the world's biggest selling book of all time? Oh, uh, let me see here. Barbara Walters. <laughs> and this is 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020. <laughs> this is okay. It's the Bible. Oh, all right. Are you familiar with the, button, the famous Bible verse, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people? Ever heard that? I haven't heard that slogan before. Yeah, that's what's happened to our nation. Righteousness exalts a nation. When a nation gives itself to things that God considers to be wrong, like rape, murder, lying, stealing, fornication, adultery, homosexuality, blasphemy, abortion, his blessing comes off the nation and his anger comes onto it. We're a nation that's lost God's blessing. We sing God bless America, but we don't mean it. Are you a person that loves righteousness, like the Bible says? Well, you got to know righteousness before you can love righteousness, and you got to understand righteousness before you can actually understand it, know it, and things like that. When my boyfriend comes home or when he sees me, he basically tells me, oh, well, we read the Bible, some things like that, and we go to St. Peter's and go back to see right. So, how are you gonna do on Judgment Day? Are you a righteous person? Are you clean in God's eyes? Are you good? Well, I am a pure spirited, and I am one of the uh, ones that were reborn again. Reborn again? Reborn again means you were baptized into Christ, you accepted God back into your life. If you guys were able to manufacture the perfect president, what would he look like? Actually, he'd look like you. <laughs> Did you hear that? Easy for president. <laughs> if you had the opportunity to craft the perfect president, what would he look like? If he was a president, he would look like God because we're all supposed to be perfect and look at his image, so that's my president. So you think God would be the perfect president? To be honest. Regardless of who is the president of the United States, Jesus Christ will always be the king. For he is the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords. It's been said that he's had no predecessor and he will have no successor. You cannot impeach him and he will never resign. And at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Philippians 3:20 says, our citizenship is in heaven and from it, we await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Until then, God has established a system within our Republic to vote for someone who is more closer to your worldview than the other. I have seen no sign that the people that we are voting for are indeed Christians. But listen, I'm not looking for a new savior. I'm looking for a president, a man, a one who has a ideology that is closer to mine. I'm voting for an individual who's gonna protect my freedoms, 
the freedom of speech, the freedom of religion, the freedom to assemble. I'm voting for a person who is not for the killing of babies in the womb. We need to have a voice for the voiceless because there's hope for the hopeless and there's help for the helpless. But we must stand up, we must speak up. And if you don't do it, well then who will? For now is the time, today is the day to prepare for tomorrow. Rise up, stand up, speak up, and vote. Do, you, do your spiritual beliefs have any bearing on any decisions you make concerning politics? Or is it, you think- Well, you know, there is right and wrong, but uh, good and bad, there's gotta be a moral compass. So is abortion wrong? Oh yeah. Why? He says it's right, she says it's wrong, who's right? How do we decide? Well, it's, again, going back to your moral compass. Right. Abortion is obviously a big deal. It's been a big deal in our country for a long, long time. Uh, what do you think about abortion? Do you think that a woman should be able to have an abortion? Um, I honestly don't. I don't believe that it's a good thing because me, myself, I'm adopted and I was also a crack baby. So do you know where Joe Biden stands on that issue? And again, I'm asking you from a neutral perspective. Yeah, I feel like he, he's not going to, he doesn't want that either, but it's going to come down to the, the votes, you know? I mean, you know that Joe Biden is pro-abortion, right? So Does that bother you? I mean, I do feel like Americans have their choice because I have my choice, you know? And I feel like they should have their choice as well. I feel like that's fair. When I look at it logically, that's more fair. But, you know, me as a person, I would, I don't want something like that to be. You believe a child is a full human being in the womb? Yes, sir. So let me ask you this. If, if someone said, look, I don't believe that a person should murder their five-year-old son, but they should have a choice to do it. Would you would you agree with that statement? No, you don't. It's you know, it's just like you wouldn't kill your kid when they're five years old. So why would you even do it when they're in your womb like that? You know, it's right. Just, There's no way that I can say that I'm a Christian and intentionally hurt someone or a group of people or there's no way I can do that. The Holy Spirit that lives in me would not allow me to conduct myself in a way that will not resemble or reflect my father in heaven. Since you summoned hypocrisy and someone saying one thing doing the other, would it concern you that Biden would be statedly uh, pro-choice and that he's okay with babies being uh, murdered in the womb? No, it, I'm going to tell you like this. I think that there's a problem um, when someone tries to dictate what I do because even our Father in Heaven, he does, he's not a dictator. He gives us free will. If someone said to you, look, I'm a landlord, this is my apartment building. Mm -hmm. These people live inside my apartment building. Mm -hmm. I have a right to go in there and take their life. Would you, would, you, would you agree with that? And do you think it would be right for someone to stop them, that landlord, from going into the apartment that he does own and taking the life of the people in there? Would you, would you think that he should be stopped and his thinking is wrong? Okay, from that aspect, from that aspect, there's people living in your apartment building that you own. The question is, do you have the right to go in there and take the lives of the people? You don't have the right to. Should they be allowed to? You should not be allowed to, and you don't have the right to. But you have the choice. Right. You have the choice to go in there and kill them. Yeah. But there's a consequence for the choice. Yeah. And then there are police officers who has the right to stop you from going and killing those people that are in there. Right. And I think we're on the same page in that regard, because that's exactly how I see it. You know, when a woman says... There are consequences. Exactly. For your action. Exactly. And on an earthly level, too. Uh -huh. So that's my perception as well, that even though a woman might say, this is my body, it, that is her body. Her body. But inside of her is another body. another body. And I believe that she shouldn't be allowed by our law to be able to take that life and extinguish it. I mean, honestly, does that make you think a little bit in that regard? It does make me think. It does make me think. Have you heard of Hobson's Choice? It's when you've got no choice at all. Take it or leave it. Actually comes from the 16th century, a man named Samuel Hobson who had a livery stable. If you wanted one of his horses, you had no choice. He says, you have to take the one by the door. Hobson's Choice. When it comes to voting, I've got Hobson's Choice. I can never, ever vote for someone who is for the killing of children in the womb. Let me ask you a question. What's the most important thing to you? Is it your personal happiness, the happiness of your family? You say, yes, that's the most important to me. It's the right of every American to pursue happiness. 
I think there's something more important than happiness. Imagine if you found a wallet with $10,000 and $100 bills in that wallet, but the man's name and address was in the wallet. What would you do? You'd say, oh, I'd take it back to him. I wouldn't steal the money. So happiness isn't the most important thing to you. Righteousness is. And that's the issue for me when it comes to abortion. For me to vote for someone who was for the killing of children in the womb is like me voting for a Nazi who wants to slaughter Jewish families. If I vote for him, I have blood on my hands. All right, we're here in Huntington Beach and we're gonna ask people to rank the different celebrities from best to worst. We have uh, Donald Trump, Gandhi, Adolf Hitler, Fat Buddha, Joe Biden, and whoever this guy is. People say that is Jesus, but we have no idea what he looked like. And the mix into this is going to be a mirror. How would you rate yourself in the midst of these different celebrities? Are you better? Are you worse? Big shout out to uh, Will Witt with Prager University for the idea. We're just going to take it a step further in that we're going to share the gospel. Be part of my video. Rate these guys from best to worst. What do you think? All right, yeah. You have Trump before Biden. All right, what are you thinking in that? What's the mindset with that? I think he's just more for the people. Put this fool over here. All right, he's the worst. And this is for luck. Biden just barely makes the cut above Hitler here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I believe Adolf Hitler didn't know that he was a bad guy. He just thought he was just doing good, even though he's bad. Um, Esteen knew he was bad. Trump over there knows he's bad. Joe Biden, do you know who Joe Biden is? No. You don't know who Joe Biden is, no. okay. He's running for president. Who's this guy? I don't know who that is. Either. Jeffrey Epstein. Is he running for president too or something? No, he's not running, he's dead now. I'm gonna throw one in the mix. I haven't added one yet. You ready for this one? Yeah. Where would you put this person? You ready? Is it me? <laughs> I know. Oh, wait, where you, <laughs> right? Probably somewhere around d d d d here. <laughs> right, right in the middle. <laughs> How would you rank this guy? This guy's awesome. This guy's great. <laughs> this guy's awesome, all right. You where can't you see the him? smile. Where would you put him? I'm gonna be, I'm gonna go second. second. I'm gonna put a second behind there. <laughs> Where would you put yourself in the midst of this? Where do you rank? Probably like after Buddha. Right, right after Buddha, so right here. You, you know he black, right? Let's do your thing. Do you believe in him? Do you know in Revelations it says he was black? Do you know in Daniel it said he was black? Okay, what right, black so Jesus. Jesus. So black Jesus, we got a... Uh, so you a me up, bro. I, I, I don't know what I did or said, that's not my intent. Oh. We just have a different worldview. We believe two different things, that doesn't make us enemies. I don't have no evidence to that. Okay. Are you a supporter of Donald Trump? Man, I, he's more along my ideology than anybody well, else. Well, you're definitely my enemy. Oh, man. Oh, okay. It's all right. It's I would right. say we have a problem here in America. And I don't think our problem is skin deep. I think our problem is sin deep. That the real issue is the heart. The heart of the problem is the problem. Wait, wait one, one second. I'm going to give you the last chance. The Romans were I'm going to start over. I can start over. pagans who murdered a black man on a cross. Sedition. Jesus, Jesus rebelled. Jesus rebelled against the Roman authority. This is a Christian argument. I'm finding this important. I believe Putin. I don't agree because if he's that patriotic like these two think, he would have done something. So, I think we just, I think we just started World War III. Uh, we, we have people that are arguing all over the place. I thought politics and religion is supposed to bring us all together. We do have a problem here in America. Nobody's better than the next. Jesus Christ supremely is innocent. And he supremely is good. Do so you think perhaps that when we die, that's it? We, we cease to exist. There's no soul, no spirit. What I really think yeah. is that I'm, I'm kind of an animal rights guy. I think that a lot of people, when they die, they're going to come back as a piglet. In a fact, piglet. Farm. Yes. Okay. They're going to come back as a piglet. Their mother will have been raped, and their mother will have been locked in a little cage where she can't move. Then someone will grab them and cut their tail off, and then someone else will grab them and cut their teeth off. As far as uh, sins that are done on Earth, I think there's nothing comes close to what humanity is doing to other animals. Let me ask you guys this. If you could live in a country that also was a sort of a utopia, so uh, no corruption, no disease, w would that be a Sounds, like Sounds, like Sounds like heaven. Sounds like heaven. Sounds like heaven. Would you guys like to go to heaven when you die? Most definitely. Absolutely. 100%. When I think of corruption and our ability to identify it, I immediately realize that there has to be a standard that makes it clear that something is corrupt and something isn't. Do you believe in an absolute standard? 
Yeah, the golden rule. Well, actually, the golden rule comes from the Bible. You cited the Bible earlier, and it actually comes from Jesus. He's the one who said, do unto others as you'd have others do unto you. However, Jesus also said that there's coming a day of judgment when all of us are going to stand before God and give account for our lives to see if we are worthy to enter that kingdom, because that's the most important thing. Yes. And our opinion, I'm sure you would agree, isn't really the one that counts. It would be his, because it's his world, and he's the ruler over it. Do you agree? Yes, absolutely. Okay, Crystal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run you through a few of the standards of his kingdom, because we can flatter ourselves, we can compare ourselves to other people and think that we're okay, but his standard, like I said, is what really matters. How many lies do you think you've told over the course of your lifetime, honestly? Uh, Don't lie to me. Oh, no, no, probably many. Um, I'm not without sin. So let me ask you this. If you were to die, do you guys think you would qualify to enter heaven morally? Would you be good enough to get into heaven? I think so. Why would you think you are good enough? Um, honestly, because a lot of stuff that I've been through, and I, a lot of stuff I've been through, I've asked for God's help, and he's actually helped me out a lot. Okay, I'm going to ask you this. How many lies would you say you've told over the course of your entire lifetime? Uh, uh, a lot. <laughs> a lot. Are you a good person? I'm a very good person. How many lies have you told in your life, Bruce? <laughs> you have lied. Well, um, on... Fess up. When I'm younger, I probably lied, but now it's like I... Bruce, you were younger when I met you. <laughs> How many lies would you say you've told over the course of your lifetime? Oh L I E. Oh my... Uh, um, unnumerable. I'm, I'm quite sure I've lied multiple times. More than you can count. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, actually, you just did it, so it's, it, it's vain to ask you, but have you ever used God's name in vain? Uh, yes. You familiar with 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10? This is what it says. Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor idolaters, nor homosexuals, nor thieves will inherit the kingdom of God. Did you know that? Well, did you also know, John? it says John 3, 16 says, whoever believe unto me shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah, that's true. But the way to find everlasting life is to repent and trust in Jesus. If you die in your sins, you're going to be damned. And I'd hate that to happen to you. I love you. I care about you. Now tell me, what did God do so sinners would not have to end up in hell? God died for all of us and shed his blood. So Crystal, the bad news is, in light of what we're talking about here today, is that none of us are good. None of us are good enough to get into heaven. I mean, if I tell you, you know, this is, you know, this is straight, you're gonna say, well, what, what's the standard of straightness, right? If I, tell you, if I tell you this is big, you're gonna say, well, compared to what? And when we compare ourselves to others, we find worse, but God is gonna compare us to his holiness on the day of judgment. And God is holy beyond description. I mean, infinitely holy. We can't even begin to fathom it or imagine it. And the reason why we know that, that sin that we might consider as small in our sight is massive in his is because of the price that he paid in order to give mankind forgiveness of sin. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that price is? Uh, his only begotten son? Yeah. Your, your Baptist roots are coming back there. I can hear it. But Crystal, I don't want you to have God's justice. I want you to have God's grace and mercy. And the good news is if you recognize your sin, you recognize you're not a good person, you're guilty, you, you deserve God's wrath and judgment and hell for all eternity. But then you look at that against the backdrop that although you deserved all that, you're an offender of a holy God, he sent his son to come and give his life so that sinners like us can be redeemed. He died, rose again three days later, and if you repent and place your faith in him, he'll give you a free gift. You can't earn it, you can't work for it. He'll give you his perfect righteousness because of his grace and love wow. and mercy. How does that sound to you, Crystal, honestly? It sounds wonderful. I'm stopping nothing to try to get there. Yeah, and you know what? The good news is you don't have to labor for that. You don't have to try to get there. You can be brought there by God if you just simply humble yourself and believe in what he did and receive it as a free gift. It makes it so easy. <laughs> so will you think about that, Crystal? Absolutely. There's no, there's no such thing as an accident in God's kingdom. And I know that you and I today are talking because he orchestrated it. I know we talked about the political aspect of things, but he wants you to be a citizen of that kingdom where he will be the perfect ruler and where there will be true righteousness and true justice and true holiness. I hope I'll see you there on that day. Definitely. I hope I see you as well, sir. So I want to urge you guys today, listen, go home, drop to your knees, say, God, I've sinned against you. I'm guilty. I deserve your wrath and judgment in hell. Thank you that Christ came and died on that cross and rose again three days later. I repent. I place my faith in you. Wash me clean. Make me new. And God is able to do that. We should do it Amen. together. We should do it together. I'm done.
I, I love that. Do it together. And I hope I'll be able to see you guys together in God's kingdom. Likewise. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Now that was quite action packed, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and for good reason. Look, we're at a very critical point in our nation's history and emotions are running high. And we as Christians, as I said before, have to do our part, make our voices heard, and vote. Look, we know that Psalm 115 tells us that our God is in heaven and he does whatever he pleases. We know that Daniel 2 talks about how God is the one who raises up and removes rulers, but we don't know exactly how God works that all out in connection with his people being faithful and doing what is right. So let's not let any guesswork fill that gap. Let's do what's right and let's stand up for righteousness for the glory of God. Would you like a, uh, you like In-N-Out? Uh, oh, really there you go. Really? Yeah, a little gift card, some lunch for you. Awesome. Thank you, I love In-N-Out. Yeah, who said doesn't? He said the animal rights activist. Yeah. <laughs> I like In-N-Out, says the animal rights activist. All right, have a good day. Help us to keep making videos of this caliber. Become a partner. Go to livingwaters.com for details. And while you're there, check out our books, our tracks, our videos, and our 20,000 online student school of biblical evangelism. And don't forget to subscribe to our free email newsletter so we can keep you updated on new videos.